Welcome to the Real Lost Boss Podcast. Hello, welcome to episode 39 of the Real Loss Boss Podcast. Should we really avoid carbs before mobs? Yes, we're doing the ketogenic diet. We're keeping on with that little mini series of looking at various fad diets. And today is the turn of the ketogenic diet. Basically, carbohydrates are the enemy. We have three macronutrients that we consume and whatever we eat is made up of one, two or all three of these. One being protein, one being fat and one being the enemy that is carbohydrates. They are not the enemy by the way but there we go, that's what a lot of people think. And yeah, with the ketogenic diet, um, that third macronutrient, carbohydrates, is very very, very limited, and we have carbohydrates in very limited amounts. Uh, this one has been around for a good while, if I'm being honest with you. And do you know what? When I started my weight loss journey in 2014, it was the most popular weight loss method. Uh, it's kind of rebranded itself because when I started my weight loss journey, it was all about the Atkins diet. The Atkins diet was absolutely everywhere. There was Atkins diet bars. It was all over social media. Uh, yeah, really, really uh, popular. You don't really hear of the Atkins diet anymore. Um, yeah, it's kind of just evolved into, we just call it the ketogenic diet. Now, I have in a previous podcast, looking at these weird and wonderful fad diets, not so long ago, done the carnivore diet. And the carnivore diet is like an extreme version of the ketogenic diet. But there are a few, you know, differences. Uh, the ketogenic diet is still the most popular weight loss method in the US of A. Uh, and we went to San Diego last year and um, there's a drink in America. You can get them over here now, but they are like ridiculously popular in America called hard seltzers and there's various different brands corona do their own version bud light do their own version white claw is another brand uh, and they are just mega popular all the bars you go in in san diego um i mean don't get me wrong they'll be popular all over america i, I assume but certainly in san diego they were everywhere we went to a baseball game and everyone was drinking these hard seltzers and every bar went in they had several flavors on tap and um i was talking to the barman in the uh, in the hotel while we were there and i was like you know what's the deal with these hard seltzers why they're so popular just like keto man everyone's on keto uh and yeah that's kind of the reason uh because people still like to have a beer um and hard seltzers if you've never had one is basically alcoholic soda water with a pint of flavor uh they're not for me some are all right actually some are all right uh, but yeah, they're not for me. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah, and obviously California is very, very health conscious, if I'm being honest with you. California is a very, very health conscious state. I know they go on about obesity in America, but certain states, obesity is rife, and then other states, actually, it's not too bad. So you might go over to America and think every single person has a weight issue. It doesn't quite work like that. And certainly in San Diego, there's a lot of fitness people, a lot of health people, very, very popular there. But yeah, so the ketogenic diet, very, very, uh, very, very popular over there. So when I started my weight loss journey, Atkins was everywhere. And because of that, I've always looked at calories from the start of my weight loss journey, though um, I never used to admit that because I was kind of one of those people. I didn't want to get judged for what I was doing. So I was kind of running along with the trend. So I never actually admitted to anyone that the main method I was using was looking at calories at the start of my journey. But I was bragging, and I'm embarrassed to say it now, that, um, yeah, everyone used to ask me in the first year of my weight loss journey, how are you losing your weight? How are you losing your weight? No carbs. Oh, I'm just not eating carbohydrates. Uh, the honest truth was I was eating carbohydrates because I didn't have a clue what carbohydrates was at that time. Yeah, my education around nutrition was, was very, very minimal. Uh, carbohydrates is a blanket term. I think a lot of people, when you say carbohydrates, they just think of bread and potatoes and chips or French fries, if you're watching across the pond. Uh, crisps, uh, if you're watching anywhere else in the world. Um, not chips. Uh, biscuits, cakes, donuts, you know, all these things. That's what everyone sort of sees carbohydrates as. But carbohydrates is a blanket term. It covers a whole matter of foods from lentils uh, and beans to things like quinoa and couscous to 
uh, whole grains like oats, fruits and veggies, we kind of always put them on their own, but they are uh, a type of carbohydrate. And then obviously you do have things like, you know, pastry and breads and cakes and biscuits and sugar, as it were. Sugar is like the purest form of carbohydrate, or shall I say free sugars, are the purest forms of carbohydrates you can get. So like, you know, your castor sugar that you put in your brew. Um, so yeah, carbs as a uh, as a blanket term, and yeah, 2014 Atkins diet through the roof, and I was telling people I was doing a a, a low carb or no carb diet. The truth was, don't get me wrong, I'd massively reduced the carbohydrates I was eating, um, but I was still eating oats and rice because I thought they were grains. I didn't realize grains fell under that blanket of carbohydrates. Uh, I was still eating certain vegetables. I was still eating some fruit as well. And don't get me wrong, every now and then I would eat potatoes and a bit of pizza and stuff like that, you know, if it was a special occasion. But yeah, on the whole, I did massively reduce my, my carb intake, but I was let me rephrase that. I massively reduced my carb intake from being a 37 stone person, probably to a normal level of carbs, what people would eat when they're eating the right amount of calories, if that makes sense. I don't feel, you know, I eat carbs now pretty much with every single meal. I absolutely love them. Um, but I don't feel I, I did eat carbs every single day, but I don't feel I ate massively less carbs than I do now, if that makes sense. Anyway, uh, yeah, the Atkins diet's rebranded over the years to the ketogenic diet. It's not, we don't really hear of it anymore. Like I say, it was massive when I started my weight loss journey in, in 2014. But yeah, it's just any diet that is that is zero carb uh, or very low carb, it just gets classed as the ketogenic diet. Apart from obviously the carnivore diet, which I have covered in a recent uh, podcast have I already said that? I might have done. Uh, I, my brain goes off on so many different tangents when I do these podcasts. But yeah, um, the, the carnivore diet, which is very popular nowadays, uh, is just an extreme version of keto. But history around the ketogenic diet. So basically, it was actually created as a diet for epileptic children, I think. Don't quote me on that, I might be wrong, but that is actually one of the main benefits or one of the main reasons why the ketogenic diet came about uh, is, and I don't know the science behind this, I, I, I genuinely don't, it's not something I've looked into, but I do know that um, children that suffer quite badly with epilepsy, when they are put on the ketogenic diet, um, the amount of seizures they have massively reduced. And that's where it sort of came about. But a little side effect of it was people noticed that these children that went on the ketogenic diet, yes, their seizures massively reduced, but they also lost quite a bit of weight. And that then got adapted. Um, adapted, is that the right word? It, Basically, people put two and two together and get five and go, oh, it's fantastic for weight loss. So then it became very, very popular with weight loss. And obviously, over the years, people have, you know, there's different sort of, like I say, strands, as it were, as, uh, of the ketogenic diet. So obviously, I've already talked about the carnivore diet, but um, the Atkins diet. And, you know, some people follow different um rules with it. But basically what the ketogenic diet is, is a high fat, medium protein, very low carb diet, where carbohydrates are generally less than in total 50 grams a day. And most people try and stick to less than 30, 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates a day. Uh, and to put that into context, two slices of white bread will be about 50 grams of carbs. So basically less than two slices of white bread a day. Um, so the diet is made up, yeah, high fat. So a lot of things like uh, eggs and cheese and full fat yogurt and butter. Uh, protein, obviously we don't care whether it's lean protein or not. So chicken, steaks, burgers, bacon, sausage, chicken wings, anything's a go. Um, 
people do consume uh, non-starchy vegetables on uh, the ketogenic diet, but again, there's different sort of rules or boundaries that certain people follow. But veggies that you would generally have on the ketogenic diet would be things like cauliflower. So very, very popular, like cauliflower rice. Uh, other vegetables, very popular, things like courgette, uh, spinach, kale, possibly broccoli, uh, cauliflower, things like that. You would stay away from root vegetables, so potatoes and turnip and swede and carrots and things like that, beetroot. Uh, though, like I say, some people do include some of those into their diet. Uh, yeah, most people on keto kind of look a little bit at um, more about total carbs in a day rather than massively ruling out. So someone might eat something that's fairly they might have carrots and swede that's quite starchy in a way uh, but if they had that they'd reduce other things throughout the day if that kind of makes sense but yeah generally uh the ketogenic diet you would have less than uh 50 um grams of carbs a day that 50 grams would be absolute uh maximum It winds me up. I'm going to tell you now, it winds me up, honestly. And I think a little bit um, why I get most wound up by the ketogenic diet is because I feel it's the one that's pushed the most around having some magic formula for weight loss. So I was going to go on a bit of a rant there, but I'm not. I might save it uh, a little bit. Um Anyway, let's go back into um, theories behind or what happens with the ketogenic diet. So uh, the ketogenic diet got its name because it basically puts your body into something called ketosis. So the three macronutrients that we consume, proteins, fats and carbs, in one way, shape or form, they are all essential for optimal body function. Now, a lot of people that promote the ketogenic diet will say carbs are non-essential because the body can create its own carbohydrates. And that is basically what the ketogenic diet is and going into ketosis. So basically, if you do not give your body carbohydrates from food sources for probably we're talking three to four days it takes to get into what we call ketosis, your body is like, I need carbohydrates to function properly. So it basically creates its own carbohydrates from uh, converting fat or fatty acids out of the liver and combining that with ketones in the body, which raise when we don't consume carbohydrates. And that process is called ketosis. And that basically uh, creates uh, kind of like an emergency type of carb for the body to function. Now, um, the theories then come when it comes to weight loss around that is the body has two fuel sources. One is fat and one is carbohydrates. So people that promote the, the ketogenic diet, I'm going to try not to get too complicated with this because I never want to. I always like to keep things simple. But basically, people that promote the ketogenic diet say we've got two fuel sources and the body will always look at carbs as its main fuel source and fat as its kind of reserve fuel source. This is what the ketogenic diet promoters say, right? So if we don't have carbohydrates in our system and our body creates its own carbs, then we only have one fuel source in our system, which is fat. And because of that, the body's only going to use fat for fuel, which will massively increase the amount of fat we burn. That is all true. That is all absolutely true. I am not going to sit here and say it isn't true. Okay, because that is true. So, yes, I eat carbs pretty much now with every main meal. And my body will burn fat 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because that's how it burns fat. But will my body burn less fat than... Um, someone that doesn't eat carbs because that is their only fuel source. Yes. All right. So someone that does ketosis or does the ketogenic diet, goes into ketosis, they will burn more body fat than me. 
we need to understand fat burning and fat loss are totally different things. Okay, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Obviously, I've spoke about it before. But that's the whole theory behind it, that because, you know, we're now not burning carbohydrates, uh, we are just burning fat, we're burning more fat, and they may say, because you're burning more fat, you're losing more fat. We know that isn't the case. If you're following me and you've watched these podcasts in order, you've watched the previous 38 podcasts, you should know now why that is a load of nonsense, but I will explain it shortly. Yes, the body does use fat and carbs if you are eating carbs as its, um, as its main fuel sources. How you should look at the human body, it doesn't exactly work like this, but to kind of create an analogy that that that's quite kind of easy to follow um think of the the human body a bit like a hybrid car right so um a hybrid car will use petrol and electric it's got two fuel two fuel sources one is petrol one is electric its main fuel source is petrol and actually that is true uh, uh, for the human body our main fuel source is fat our preferred fuel source is carbs, but our main fuel source is fat. We burn fat 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You burn fat when you're asleep. I'm burning fat sat here now recording this podcast, right? So that is like petrol in a hybrid car. Carbohydrates is a fuel source that is used by the body. The body likes to use it, but it will only use it for certain tasks when we need like optimal energy, as it were. So think of... If you've got a hybrid car now and it, you run it on petrol most of the time, every now and then you might go into, or, you know, I, I don't want to, you might be sat there going, well, I've got a self-charge hybrid and it, it, it uses electric and think, I know, but try and, try and go with me here, right? If I've got an electric hybrid car, I can turn off the electric motor and I can just run on petrol. If I want to make my car, my hybrid car, have the most power, Right, I would run electric and um, petrol at the same time. Petrol is your fat, electric is your carbs. And that's the same with the human body. So I've just been to the gym now. When I go to the gym, I need my body to have the most energy, to have the most power it can have. So when I'm in the gym, right, my body will have my petrol and electric motor running at the same time. I will burn fat and carbohydrates right? Uh, when I'm sat down like this, my body doesn't really need carbs unless I'm working because carbs are essential for optimal brain function. So then I will burn fat and that electric motor will kick in for brain function. Um, if I'm sat just watching telly and I'm not really using my brain or I'm asleep, the body doesn't use any carbs. It will just use fat for fuel because we need fuel constantly to survive. Does that kind of make sense? Anyway, um yeah <laughs> i try to i'm trying to compute in my own head if that does make sense but basically that's how the human body works so obviously if you have a hybrid car and you don't charge it's not a self-charged hybrid it's a plug-in hybrid eventually you know electric will at some point run out it lasts longer if you use it alongside petrol but if you just use the electric motor you might get 30 miles 35 miles and it'll be gone and if it's gone you will just use petrol permanently right and um so you are going to be using more petrol than electric you're not using electric because you've got no electric in just like if you go on the ketogenic diet you're not going to be using carbs for energy because um you've not got any right you're just going to be using fat now if i don't use my electric motor and i just use petrol i'm going to use more petrol because my car isn't as efficient but if I start off the day with 60 quids worth of petrol in my car and I drive it around all day and I use 60 quids worth of petrol or 60 quids worth of petrol at the beginning of the week and at the end of the week, my tank's zero. If I then go to the petrol station and put 60 pound back in, my energy levels stored in the car are exactly the same. Yeah, I've burnt petrol all week because I've had no electric and I've burnt more petrol than if my electric motor's charged up. But I started off with 60 quids worth of petrol and I finished the week with 60 quid's worth of petrol. Why? Because I've replaced the energy burn with the same amount of energy. 
And that's the difference between fat burning and fat loss. It's irrelevant how much fat you burn. If I only put 40 quid back in my car, I've got 20 pound less energy in there because I've not replaced, I've not put as much energy in. That's where your calorie deficit comes in. I hope this is making sense. It is in my head. I don't know if it is in yours, but I hope it is. So basically, fat loss is simply down to calories in versus calories out. It's irrelevant what diet you are on. Yes, yeah, certain diets might mean you burn more fat, but if you replace that fat with the same amount of energy, your fat is not going to go anywhere whatsoever. So whether I do the ketogenic diet or not, if I burn 15,000 calories in a week and I eat 15,000 calories in a week, my body fat will stay exactly the same. If I do the ketogenic diet and I burn 15,000 calories in a week and I eat 10,000 calories in a week, I'll lose a pound and a half of body fat, right? It really is. It is that simple. I hope it's come across as that simple. So a lot of people think because they are burning a lot more fat by not eating carbohydrates, that is going to equate to losing a lot more fat. Fat loss is simply determined by calories in versus calories out. So why do people that do the ketogenic diet lose a lot of weight? Uh, certainly at the beginning part of the diet. You might have done it yourself. I've done it myself. I've toyed around with all sorts of diets, even while on my own weight loss journey. In 2019, I was a personal trainer. And uh, a guy that worked behind the desk in the gym, who was a fitness instructor at the time, uh, we both said to each other, should we do the ketogenic diet for a month? And we did it for a month. And I lost 20 pounds in a month. And I wasn't, at the time, I was like, uh, I think I was about 18, you know, maybe 17 and a half, 18 stone. No, I was probably 18 stone, because the lightest I've ever been 17 stone. And this got me down to the lightest I've ever been. Right? And I lost 20 pounds in a month and I couldn't believe it. And we both struggled with it. It was flipping tough because I love carbohydrates, especially when you're a personal trainer and you're moving loads because carbs are essential for energy. Right, All these people on social media that say I've not eaten a carb for six months and I've had more energy than I've ever had before are lying to you. Absolute nonsense. If you have a really unhealthy diet right, and you go to a ketogenic diet, Will you have more energy than you've ever had before? Yeah, of course, because you've eaten junk. And for the rights or wrongs of it, going on a ketogenic diet is going to improve your overall, like, I'm not going to say it's going to improve your overall health, but it's going to improve the the the, the goodness going into your body in a way. And it's certainly going to reduce a lot of the cack that's going into your body. Uh, but if you eat a healthy, balanced diet that includes carbohydrates, lean proteins, you know, whole, fibrous carbs, fruits, veggies, all that, and then go on to a ketogenic diet where you're not having or hardly any carbs, your energy levels will plummet. Anyway, I struggled for a month, but I lost 20 pounds um, in weight. Um, and why did I lose 20 pounds in a month? The main reason, the main reason is loss of water weight, stroke water retention. When we eat carbohydrates, uh, anything we eat raises our blood sugars. But when we eat carbs, it raises our blood sugars quite a lot. We then release insulin from our pancreas that allows those blood sugars to, I've talked about this before, but I'll repeat it, that allows, uh, that basically takes um, our blood glucose. So the insulin takes our blood glucose over to our cells uh, and stores that blood glucose as glycogen in our muscles, skeletal muscle, biceps, thighs, things like that, in our, <laughs> that is not a technical term, quadricep would be the technical term, but basically uh, stores uh, glucose as glycogen in our liver, in our brain, and in our skeletal muscle, which is things like, yeah, biceps, triceps, quadriceps, hamstrings, Glutamus maximus, peachy bot bot, uh, as it were. Um, and that is what we use as energy when carbs come into play. Now, one gram of glycogen stores three to four grams of three to four grams of water. So for every gram of glycogen from eating carbs, we store it can be worth five grams, right? So for instance, if you added a uh, um, 
500 grams of, of glycogen into your system from eating carbohydrates, that would store 2,500 grams or in total because you'd have 2,000 grams of water attached to those glycogen mole molecules, right? And this is when, like, you have a week at Christmas where you predominantly eat carbs, you go on a week all inclusive, predominantly eat carbs, you, you gain stupid amounts of weight because your glycogen levels from eating all those carbs are absolutely through the roof. Uh, and this is also why a few days after being on holiday, if you get back to a normal eating pattern, you drop serious amounts of weight. So I dropped 20 pounds in a month doing the ketogenic diet in 2019. And probably 14, 15 pounds of that was just me, what we would call drying out. Basically, water stored in my body for a number of reasons is gone because I've got no glycogen in my system. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, the first two, three weeks of, uh, of uh, uh, to, to be honest with you, I call it the whoosh effect. And the first couple of weeks of any weight loss method, certainly if you've gone from a very unhealthy diet, you will see a, a big drop. But the ketogenic diet, we tend to see one of the biggest whoosh effects, massive drop on the scales. Uh, after that, once that whoosh effect has gone, you then down to just losing body fat. Do people lose more body fat on the ketogenic diet than other weight loss methods? Or, you know, is it one of those methods where, yeah, we see a lot of body fat gone over short periods of time? Yeah, I'll be honest with you, it, it is. Why? Because of how restrictive it is. Most of us, our diet is made up of 50 to 60% carbohydrates, right? So if you consume two and a half thousand calories a day and you go on the ketogenic diet, you're pretty much going to halve your calorie intake. That's a pretty restrictive calorie deficit. So now don't go wrong, you are going to replace some of those carbs with extra fat and protein, but you're not going to replace all your carbs with extra fat and protein. Why? Because fat and protein on its own is not that appetizing. It honestly isn't. Like, I absolutely love butter, right? It's, it's yeah, it's sensational. I absolutely love it. But I don't sit there eating blocks of butter. Butter is sensational when it's spread over a really nice piece of warm sourdough or on some toast or crumpets, right? Likewise, I absolutely love cheese, but I don't sit there gnawing on blocks of cheese. I mean, I probably could do, I flipping love cheese, but I don't sit there gnawing on blocks of cheese. Cheese is absolutely amazing when it's paired with crackers, a carbohydrate. And obviously, we're not eating bread. We're not eating crackers, you know? So, uh, likewise, I absolutely love bacon, but my favorite way to eat bacon is between two slices of bread. Well, if I'm on a ketogenic diet, I ain't eating those two slices of bread. Um, so, yeah, we will replace some of the uh, calories that we are going to miss out on through uh, from carbohydrates with fats and protein, but you don't replace loads. Uh, a, because protein and fat on their own aren't really that appetizing, and you will tend to eat a lot more protein than you would do normally, uh, and protein is satiating. It fills you up. So, again, decent for appetite suppression. But, yeah, basically, most people that go on a ketogenic diet half their calorie intake. And by halving your calorie intake, you are going into quite a restrictive uh, or, or a strict calorie deficit. And that strict calorie deficit, 1,500 calories a day, you're going to lose three pounds a week, right? Three pounds a week is nearly a stone a month in body fat. That's a lot of weight to lose. And you might be sat there going, sounds absolutely sensational, Neil. Yeah, in the short term, right? In the short term. And this is the problem with a lot of crazy, weird, and wonderful fad diets, which I have covered in the last few episodes of the podcast. They are unsustainable. How long are you really not going to eat carbohydrates for? Yes, there will be a minority of people out there that will do it forever, right? For life. Neil, I'm not eating carbohydrates for the rest of my life, right? But... Um, yeah, for most of us, we are really going to struggle. And I've started using an expression a lot. I've always used it, but I use it a lot. It's called hitting a brick wall. And certain fad diets, you will hit the brick wall a lot sooner than others. And yeah, with, uh, with the ketogenic diet, you're going to hit the brick wall, right? And once you hit that brick wall, 
you you succumb to the temptations of eating carbohydrates. Once you've done that, you've broke your diet. Then you get peed off with yourself, and you know it's just a, a it's just a, a nasty spiral. So, if you go onto a ketogenic diet, if you cut carbohydrates out of your um, diet, are you going to lose a lot of weight? Yes, you are. Are you going to lose a lot of weight over a short period of time? Yes. The initial few weeks, is it all body fat? Absolutely not. The majority of that weight loss is water retention. This is why a lot of people, similar to the way a boxer cuts weight, you know, the way a boxer cuts weight. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and the thing is, I could not eat carbs now for two weeks and I'd probably drop, yeah, 12 to 15 pounds. Sounds great, doesn't it? As soon as I touch a carb again, boom, it's straight back on, right? Because I'm just, that water retention that I've lost will just come back into the body, right? Um, so it's kind of, it gives you, the first two, three weeks of the ketogenic diet gives you what we would call a false positive, a false representation of weight loss. Like I say, most weight loss methods, you will get a whoosh effect. And I'm always very clear with that when my clients check in, certainly on their first check in, and they're jumping for joy. And they should, you know, if you lose eight pounds in two weeks, you are eight pounds lighter. It's going to make a difference. Of course it is. But. I do uh, use the terminology of, uh, I don't mean to pee on your chips, but, um, you know, if you've stuck to the calories I've given you, out of that eight pounds of weight loss, you've lost six pounds of water retention, two pounds of body fat, things will slow down now, and we should just get into seeing fat loss. So, yeah, that is, is that the main issue with the ketogenic diet? That it is um, unsustainable it's not the main issue no it is an issue if you want to have a successful weight loss journey so like all fad diets you stick to it for a period of time it will give you successful weight loss but very very rarely will it give you a successful weight loss journey absolutely not and a successful weight loss journey is losing weight getting to your goal weight maintaining those losses will there be a minority of people that have done that through keto of course because that's why it stuck around for so long it only takes a couple of people to have success at something for that to filter down for something to stay popular. Fad diets come out all the time and they disappear as as quick as they come in. Yeah, but certain ones stick about because there is, like I say, a minority of people that do actually generally have success on them. Uh, what is other issues with the ketogenic diet? So apart from it being... Um, unsustainable and it's going to be very unlikely that you have a successful weight loss journey on it. Um, these are the main issues with it and some of these I felt by just doing it for a month. One is fatigue and tiredness. Yes, going into ketosis the body will generate a form of carbohydrates but it doesn't create the form of carbohydrates that the body needs. Carbohydrates are essential for the human weight. It's essential for blood regulation. It's essential for optimal energy. There's lots of benefits for, you know, certain carbohydrate, you know, they're essential for gut health, things like getting fiber into our system. So there's lots of reasons to consume carbohydrates, which you are not going to get if you go on the ketogenic diet. And yeah, I felt fatigue and tiredness. I feel the best when I eat a majority uh, uh, yeah, an overall healthy diet, right? It doesn't mean I don't have occasional bits of junk food because I do, you know, I always stick to my own rule of 80, 20, 70, 30, 80, 20. So the majority of my diet is healthy and nutritious uh, with a few treats on the side. If I eat junk food for a week, I feel like rubbish, right? If I eat healthy for a week, I tend to feel pretty good, but my cravings are out of control. So I find that quite hard. So I have that nice balance. But when I did the ketogenic diet for a month, doing... 16 to 20,000 steps a day as a personal trainer, uh, teaching up to six or seven fitness classes a week, which is what I was doing in 2019, uh, and then doing my own training as well. I was irritable, tired, grumpy, horrible. Absolutely horrible. Uh, other issues, I don't want to go into too much detail, but constipation, uh, lack of fiber in your diet from going on the ketogenic diet will make you feel, people say, oh, I don't feel bloated anymore. You will feel uncomfortable if it causes constipation, which it did with me and I found it. And I'm, uh, again, don't want to go into too much detail, but I'm a regular guy. Uh, and I wasn't. And I found it very, very uncomfortable because I do eat quite a lot of food. Even on the ketogenic diet, I still felt like I was eating decent levels of food. And if that food 
a, you know, we only absorb so much into the body, the rest of it has to come out. And if it doesn't come out, it's very, very uncomfortable. Um, now, obviously, I only did the ketogenic diet for a month, so this wasn't really relative to me. But um, people that do it long term, you are going to increase LDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol is um, your low density lipid lipid proteins if i get the terminology correctly i've probably said that wrong but basically ldl cholesterol is the cholesterol that goes around your blood that hooks onto things and causes things like plaques and blocks in your artery uh, in your arteries which then will lead later on in life to things like heart disease and heart attacks and all this that and the other uh, and yeah you'll because you're going to be eating a lot more fat it's that simple you know you've got to replace those carbohydrates with something and people tend not to look at the health of the diet that they are consuming. So again, when I was doing the ketogenic diet, lost 20 pounds in a month, I was eating bacon, eggs, butter, cheese. I don't drink coffee, but the guy that was doing it in the gym with me, he was putting coffee in, he, he, butter in his coffee that I've seen. I'm like, yeah, it's just ridiculous some of the things people do. Uh, and last but by no means least, which is, uh, it, which is uh, there is, you know, other issues as well, but the four big ones is fatigue, tiredness, constipation, uh, increased levels of LDL and an increased risk of kidney stones. I've already said this, the ketogenic diet is actually quite a successful diet um, um, when it comes to uh, controlling epilepsy in children. Uh, there is... Um, some studies that show it can help with adults, but it's mainly around children. Again, I don't know the theories behind that, but uh, it can help epilepsy in adults, but it certainly helps with children. But these studies also show that one in 20 children that went on the ketogenic diet to control their epilepsy uh, got kidney stones, which can be really painful and really quite serious. Uh, whereas I think the I think one in fifty thousand or one in a hundred thousand children might get kidney stones. Or it might be a bit more than that. It was literally like one in twenty, uh, and that's the same whether you're a kid or an adult. Yeah, it, it, it increases, massively increases the risk of kidney stones uh, going on the ketogenic diet. And that is generally because of uh, a massive increase in protein in your diet and not having other things in your diet that can help filter it, uh, help, uh, help with the digestion and filtration of the protein because you'll just end up with a lot of protein going through your kidneys, which can cause kidney stones. Um other issues with the ketogenic diet, I, I said this before, I nearly went on a run. I have such a like a pet hate with people eating lettuce in, using lettuce instead of buns for burgers. And uh, and I also think people on the ketogenic diet, they seem to I've said this about people on the carnivore diet, which is like an extreme version of keto. They seem to have, because they're one of few and far between people that are not eating carbohydrates, they kind of get this air of... Su uh, 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 let me put my teeth back in. They kind of get this air of superiority around them. And it's just like, oh, jog on, Giles. No one's interested in your absolute nonsense that you've not had a carbohydrate for a flipping six years or something. Do you know what I mean? They really do. The certain fad diets out there where people are on them they change and i've seen it maybe i changed for a month when i did it but yeah i've just got a and these skinny burgers and i'm just like right so <laughs> and it spoons do one now and it's like a burger without a bun now don't get me wrong i get it if you're a celiac or something like that option great option but spoons do one and i'm literally like they've got like this skinny burger and the normal burger and the normal burger's like um 680 calories and the skinny burger is like 500 calories so i'm like oh yeah it's the 180 calories of bun that's the massive issue with that burger it's not the fact it's got 20 grams of saturated fat in it yeah that's just that's just a pet hate of mine um and yeah you know and i think like i say one of the big issues and, and another pet hate of mine is why i nearly ran, went on a rant earlier on in this podcast is you know, carbohydrates are essential. And like I say, carbohydrates are a blanket term. I'm not saying pies are essential. I'm not saying cakes and donuts are essential. But having a certain amount of carbs going into our system is essential for optimal body function, for brain function and, and this, that and the other. Um, and like I say, carbs is oats. 
it's you know uh, beans, pulses, lentils, it's carrots, it's sweet corn, it's peas, it's broccoli, it's cauliflower, it's apples, it's oranges. Right? These are carbs, right? and these are really, really good for us. It's honey, it, you know. Um, so, yeah, and to get anyone uh, to promote a diet, and especially with people, again, another pet hate, there's a lot, isn't there? Uh, people sort of saying, it's healthier not to eat veg and fruit than to eat it. <clears throat> Absolutely blows my mind. It really, really does. Anyway, there's my thoughts on the ketogenic diet. I could have waffled on about loads. I could have gone on. I probably have gone off on several tangents. You know what I'm like uh, with these podcasts at times. I try and stay on the straight and narrow as I can. But, yeah, that's the basis around it. And, and, and you know... Uh, like any other fad diet, the main issue with, from a weight loss perspective, because that's how I tie, I look at these, you know, from a health perspective, it is unhealthy because you're mainly, the issues are you're not going to consume any fibre in your diet and you're going to massively increase the amount of saturated fat you consume. But from a weight loss perspective, like any other fad diet, it's that unsustainability. I want every single person that has a weight issue to have long-term weight loss success. And I'm not saying... As always, there isn't a minority of people, right? But weight is not a minority issue. Weight is a majority issue. So it's absolutely pointless promoting a diet where a minority, a smidge, a small amount of people are, are having long-term success on it. We need to start promoting diets where people have long-term success because that's, that's what it's all about. And you're never going to get it with these crazy, weird and wonderful fad diets. So if you're going to go on to the ketogenic diet, yes, you're going to lose a lot of weight in the short term, right? And, and to be honest with you, you might be sat there now going, I'm just a stone overweight, Neil, and I want to feel a bit better when I'm going to IB for in a few weeks. Knock yourself out. If that's, what you, if, that's, if, that's, if that's the reason you're dieting, then I, I'm not your coach. I'm not the person you should be listening to because I want to work, or a lot of my advice is around long-term weight issues. And I want to solve long-term weight issues. I want to solve, help people that have suffered with their weight for years, you know, five, you know, even if it's two or three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, and you're never going to do that with a fad diet. You're just not. The science tells us you know, over-restrictive dieting leads to weight gain, not to weight loss. And something I say all the time, I've probably said it before on one of these podcasts. How many of you now, let me know in the comments, that are listening to this podcast are heavier now than when you first went on a diet. And the methods you've mainly used to try and lose weight is over-restrictive fad diets. Anyway, there we go. That's it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna waffle on anymore. Those are my views on uh, the ketogenic diet. Uh, any thoughts? Let me know. Please get it in the get it in the comments. Uh, please subscribe. Please tell your friends and your aunties and your uncles all about the podcast. Please share it out any way you can. That would be absolutely amazing. Of course, make sure you subscribe and like. And not only like it if you do like it. You know, I'm not going to force you to. Uh, but there we go. Uh, that's episode 39 done and dusted. I think I'll do one more in the uh, looking at uh, fad diets, and then we'll move on to another subject. Uh, and until next time, uh, in whichever way or format you are watching me, as always, make sure you are bossing your weight loss.